Hello, everyone. You're listening to Unlocking Greatness Podcast with Zenja Glass. Feel free to call me Z. I want to talk about how humility helps you reach your full potential. I'll say that again. How humility helps you reach your full potential. It, it kind of seems like you'd want to do the opposite, right? That, you know, if, if you're being very humble, it almost is seems as if you're allowing people to walk over you or... Um, I don't know that you're shy and you don't you don't do much and you don't you don't achieve much. But actually, throughout the Bible, it's totally the opposite. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that talks about how God opposes the proud, right, and how He gives grace to the humble. And I've got a story I want to share with you all. I don't think I've shared this story before, but I don't know if I did. You'll just hear it again. But it's a story about one of my sons, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let me read a passage real quick. Um, and the reason this the reason this subject matter is so important, God has had to humble my butt so many times. Even now, there's times where God literally, he gets me alone and he just has to humble me because there's times I think I'm doing what's right or I think I'm doing at least what I thought he told me to do, you know? And sometimes he gets you alone and he just humbles you. And it doesn't feel good in the moment because it almost feels like, well, man, you know, when am I going to get this right? But But I've noticed that when you come out of those, I should never say come out of that stage of being humble because we should always walk in humility, but you get my point. When, when, when he's done what he needs to do to, get, to correct you and get you on the right course, it's almost as if you begin to go higher. Like It's almost as if he can use you more, um, and I don't like to use that kind of phrase, but he can use you more when he knows that you're not going to walk with a prideful spirit. So again, I got a story I want to share with you guys in just a minute about my son, and I hope I haven't shared it before, but it's a really good story to kind of nail this point. But let me first turn to one or two passages in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 14 rather, in verse um, 11, it says, for everyone who exalts himself will be humble. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Again, it almost sounds backwards, doesn't it? For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Let's turn over to James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 6 says, um, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Again, I'll say it again. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, before I read the next passage and tell this little story I want to talk about, I just want to say this. When when you're filled with pride and no one can tell you anything, or, um, you know, you, you think you know better or you think you're higher than other people or whatever. You don't really realize it at the time. It's almost as if it takes someone to tap you on the shoulder and point it out to you. Right. Or or it takes for, you know, you to, you to make enough mistakes to realize, wait a minute, I need to get some help. So if you're tempted to feel like, well, that ain't me. Yeah, God absolutely opposes a proud. I would say have a reality check with your own heart. You know, when I sit in my closet at night with God, I try my best to pray for at least an hour every night, you know, to keep this pattern in the spirit. That's a whole nother conversation about developing patterns in the spirit. But anyway, I love going before him. But one of the things I always ask is what search my heart. Because you guys know I mess up on a good day. I really do search my heart and see if there's anything offensive in me. Am I walking in pride? And I, and I would say to God, please keep pride far from me. You know, so, sometimes um um, God will share with me something I did or I said, or, you know, in my heart that was prideful or, or how I didn't take advice or I, how I didn't whatever. He'll bring it up during those times. And I'm always saying, search my heart. Is, is there anything offensive in me at all? That literally is what I ask him. Is it a love of money? Is it trying to get out there and get, you know, viewers or, uh, or influence or whatever, right? It, it ha- has that taken your place? Is it, is it being prideful, you know, in my family? Is it being prideful in, in the way I handle my business affairs, right? Is there anything in, in me that feels like I can do this without you? Anything you can think of that I'm putting before you, show me. And I'll say, I, 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 the exact words I use is I said, show me what doesn't smell like you and what doesn't look like you. Lord, keep pride far from me. And I say that to him all the time. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes there's things he reveals to me and I'm like, oh, I guess I didn't realize I was doing that, God. And then I'll say, and I know this sounds weird, but you guys know this is how I talk to God. I'll say, okay, God, put me through it again. Okay, God, I'm going to do better next time. You know, because I want want him to know that he's dealing with a moldable person, a moldable spirit. You know, I want him to know that when he's working through me, even though I mess up a lot, that I'm willing to walk in humility and be corrected 
right? And let him show me what to do. So there's sometimes I do things or I say things and I go back and I'm like, okay, I need to work on that. I need to say that better. Okay, I don't think I had the right heart in that. Okay, I don't think I'm trusting God in that situation. Okay, I'm walking in pride over here. God opposes the proud. He can have very little to do with a prideful spirit because that means you don't need him. When you're walking in pride, you're basically saying, I got this. So anyway, I'm just talking. I'm going to get to the story in just one minute. Let me just read one more passage in here. There's another one in here and. um First Peter uh, chapter six, first Peter chapter six says, humble yourselves, therefore, under my under God's mighty hand. Well, why do we need to humble ourselves out of God's mighty hand? What's the big deal? And it says that he may lift you up in due time. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up. We don't lift ourselves up when we begin to do that. We get ourselves into some trouble. Sometimes we can even embarrass ourselves. Right. And I'm, I'm not judging anybody. I'm the first to stand in line and say, I mess up. I deal with pride. I deal with arrogance. You know, that's one of the things that God works on me with. So I'm just sharing my life and I'm hoping that it helps someone else. God loves a humble spirit. He can have very little to do with a prideful spirit. In fact, he opposes the proud. There's benefits of walking in humility as well. There's a passage. Uh, I think I had Mark one uh, page here in Proverbs chapter 22. This would be the last one I go through before I tell the story I want to talk about. Proverbs chapter 22 uh, in verse four, it says humility in the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know it had anything to do with wealth and honor. That's interesting. Proverbs 22, four humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and and life. That's an amazing passage to hold on to. Let me tell you all a little story that that happened. Um, and, and again, if I might have told this before, I, I don't think I did because I remember my son asking me, Mom, did you tell that story yet? And I says, I don't think I did. Yes, son. I said, I keep forgetting to tell it. But I want to tell a story about um, uh, my youngest son. Uh, he's in his second year of college now. But um, uh, I remember this was last year. This was uh, his freshman year in college, uh, and um, uh, we were going to get some ice cream, and we were in this uh, restaurant, and um, we were sitting um, at the table, and I remember this team of Ivy League, you know, college students came in. You may say, well, how do you know they're Ivy League? Well, because they all had on their different, you know, university, you know, whatever gear and uh, you could tell some of the major universities they were from and they were definitely from some of the major um, universities from around the world hands down and I guess they were here for some special um, soccer um, something some major soccer tournament where they were bringing in the best of the best from all around and uh, I got to be really careful in sharing this story because I don't, I don't want I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm painting the picture the right way I'll just say Probably the best way of putting it is um, my son and I really kind of stuck out in the restaurants. We were only ones in the restaurant. Let's let's just say this with a big old afro, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, you know he he's at a, um, a community college. Um, uh, a couple hours away from home because uh, that's how we roll. We do community colleges. If you don't have a four-year scholarship, community college is the way that we go. That's just how my family roll. I have no problem with community colleges. I love them. So uh, his plan, like many uh, youngsters, is to do two years in community and then transfer. But anyway, I digress. So we're sitting there and uh, enjoying a little, little bit of uh, ice cream. And, and keep in mind, my son is like 6'4", you know, big old tall young man. And uh, we're sitting there, and at the table, they have the table designed with checkers on the table. Um, is it checkers? No, not checkers. It's, um, what do you call it? Chess. That's what it is, chess. So these tables have chess sort of engraved, and, you know, engraved into the table. So we're sitting there, and my son's always played chess. He just loves it. Since he was younger, it's just something he learned on his own. I don't know the first thing about chess, so don't ask me anything about anything about it. But I just know that it's something that he's always enjoyed doing. And so we're sitting there, and he's got on his little... Um, community college shirt right and then you got all of these ivy league people coming in uh and um these young men it was about a good maybe 12 of them right so they were out on some ice cream break and and uh we're sitting there at the table uh and uh my son because he's like me he talks to everybody uh uh he said to one of them you know you know you guys want to play a game of chess and maybe they said it to him maybe oh no this is what happened one of them said i remember now my son was sitting there playing chess kind of teaching me how to play it i remember now uh and one of them said hey do you want to play and and the friend of one of the young men said 
uh, and these were his exact words. He said, um, yeah, maybe he can teach you a thing or two. I kid you not, those were the words. Now, as Mama Bear, you know I'm already ready to jump up and say something, but I got to remember, okay, Z, come on now. First of all, God opposes the proud. And I remember, I remember saying this to myself. I remember thinking, okay, maybe they can teach him a thing or two about chess and, you know, he can even be better with playing. But please don't, 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 don't snap or say something crazy to these kids. Just, just, I shouldn't use the word crazy. But don't say something, you know, off to these kids. Just let them be. And they all about 19 or 20 years old, all of them, right? So they come over to the table and one of the young men said to my son, so, so let's just say, I'm just going to name a name. I'm just going to say, you know, uh, Kent, right? So Kent sits down in front of my son. I don't know why I came up with that name, but he sits down in front of my son and uh, the whole team is around him. And one of the players said to him, and this is the honest truth, uh, said to my son, he said, and the name wasn't Kent. I just want to be careful with using names. He said, uh, yeah, uh, just so you know, Kent's never lost a tournament. He's one of the top. Now, again, I don't know much about chess, but whatever the top playing chess players are, that's who this young man was. He's one of the top such and such, such and such, and he's naming his, his level. And so my son, you know, he, he's kind of, he's chill, you know. He loves God, such an amazing young man. And he, he just sat across the table and he says, oh, he says, what level are you? And I don't even know what they're talking about. And whatever it was, um, um, no, 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 he didn't even say what level. He didn't even ask what level he was. I take that back. Uh, the guy said to him, you guys got to bear with me because I'm just having a family talk at this point. But the guy says to him, to my son, he is a whatever, whatever, master, whatever. And uh, I don't know what it means. And um, Kent sits down in front of my son. I'm sitting next to my son and I'm like, Lord, OK, let me just let it be. And he tells my son what his level is. He says, yes, I'm a, my ranking is a whatever. I don't even know. Don't even ask me good rankings for chess, but let's just say a thousand or fifteen hundred or whatever. I don't know. I don't remember. But whatever it was, it was a very high ranking. And he says, Yes, my level was a such and such. And I looked at my son, I'm like, I don't even know what he's talking about. And my son's like, Oh, okay. And so they sat there and just began to play. I don't know anything about chess. All I see is that they both look like they had the equal amount of people, you know, people I'm saying, you know, those the horses. I don't even know what you call them, but one person had the black ones, the other one had the white ones, and they're moving their pieces around. I'm sitting there eating my ice cream, and uh, I and uh, and and all of his friends are standing around him, and um, and the friends are uh, saying, "Yeah, he's gonna teach you a thing or two. He's gonna teach you something. He's never been beat." And so my son is just sitting there quiet, and and uh, you know, and they're just playing and moving their pieces. And this honest truth, I even have pictures, but I'm not gonna post the pictures because I don't want you know you guys. Anyway, you know how social media can be. But I thought, mm, let me take some pictures of this. So they're moving the pieces around. And then I'm beginning to notice something begins to happen. And Kent, let's just say, um, and all of them in their Ivy League stuff. And I could tell they were kind of looking down on my son a little bit because uh, when they were telling them, they were all announcing what colleges they go through to. And, and again, it was the top colleges in the country. And my son's there in his little local community college shirt with his big old fro just chilling. And they're moving pieces around. And um, I noticed that you know, uh, okay, it was less and less pieces on the board. Again, I still don't know what's going on. And then at some point, and I'm not making this up, I kid you not, the other team that Kent, Kent was on, his friend is like, what are you doing? And his friend is like, they're getting upset. And my son is just still sitting there just quietly. And I'm like, I don't even understand what's going on. And then his one or two of his friends begin to talk to him. So then it's like three, four people. They were like, no, you're going to do such and such and such. And they were like talking to him. And then and, and, and they're moving the pieces around. And I'm like, I don't even know what's going on because everything looks the same to me. I'm still seeing pieces on the board. Right. And my son is just sitting there like, you know, doing his thing. And before you know it, the whole team is gathered around Kent, right? And they're looking at the board and they're obviously very upset. Kent is mad. Like he's turning red, just so you know. And I'm sitting here looking, still don't know what's going on because I still see like, I don't know, six, seven pieces on each side on the board. And all of a sudden, and they're all telling Kent what to do. So it's like this whole team against my baby. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, God, you know, I don't know chess. But everything in me want to get in here and tell these boys something because they was talking all this trash. But I was like, let me just let it be. And I, I so badly wanted to say, wait, 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 wait. It can't be like six, seven of y'all against just my son. But, you know, 
it's just a game, it's chess. I'm like, let me just learn from this. And honestly, I was kind of checking out my son's character as I was watching it, because I'm always trying to teach them a lesson or two, but that's another subject. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Kent, he does this, bam! So whatever his piece was, I don't know what it was, a horse, a donkey, I don't even know. But whatever you call that chess piece, he, bam, he slams it down, he lays it down, he pushes back his chair, and he gets up, and it's the God on his truth, and they storm out of the restaurant, slamming the door. No buy, no nothing. And as he's leaving out, my son's like, you know, Kent, you know, good game, good game. And I'm sitting and I'm looking, my son's gonna crack up when he watches this video. He's gonna be like, mom, it took you a year to make that video. I'm sitting here and I'm like, I looked at my son and said, what just happened? Like there's still pieces to me, like when you play checkers, right? It ain't over tall. You don't jump all the men and there's nothing left. Well, apparently when you got really good chess players playing, they know when they've lost the game, I guess there could be a number of pieces left and you know when the game is over. It didn't make sense to me because it was still a lot of pieces on the board. And my son explained to me, and I cannot remember what he said, but he said something like, Mom, um, the game is over. And I said, well, how is the game over? He goes, I won. I go, how did you win? Like, it's still a lot of pieces. And he was explaining to me something, whatever he was saying. Well, Mom, no, because he can't do anything, because if he do this, and I'm going to da-da-da-da, and if he does that, and if he, like, my son just quickly ran through all the moves that he could possibly make, and that it was over. There was nothing else he can do. So he um, checked him, or whatever you want to call it. And I said, are you kidding me? And I said, so wait a minute, this guy's a high, a high ranking chess player. I go, didn't he just say that he was a such and such? And you don't want to know what my son said? I said all this to get to this point. You guys know I'm long winded sometimes, but it's been a while since we've had just a family talk like this. My son said something to me I'll never forget. He, I said, son, if you knew that you can beat him, I said, well, what is the deal with this? And he says, well, mom, uh, first of all, you know, when they saw me, I guess they figured I didn't know how to play, and that's cool. He says, you know, people can think what they want. And he said, but, you know, when him and all his friends, they got the bragging about how good he is, he's never been beaten, this and that. He said, that's cool. He said, I play against some pretty tough people. And uh, then he says to me, but when Kent sat down and told me his ranking, whatever that number is, my son said, he says, I then knew how to play him at a skill level higher than his ranking because I knew all of the moves that he could possibly make. And he said, he's good though. He said, mom, he's actually very good. A really, really, really good chess player. He says, but he's a little too confident with what he already knows. And if he would not have been telling his ranking, I wouldn't have played him at that level. I just would have played a regular game, whatever that means. And his, my, my son's whole point was that he says, but if he just learns more and he humbles himself and he learns um, some more, whatever you call it, all of these higher plays to do, he said he actually can be even better, even though he ranks extremely high. But he actually could be better. But he said, but, you know, it's obvious to me. I knew after his first, I kid you not, my son said that. He said, I knew after his first, I don't know, let's say two, three moves. I knew after his first two, three moves what level he was at. And I knew that he needed to learn more to really be able to be like one of the best, like to really get up there. He says, I knew. He says, but, you know, the, the, the arrogance, like he didn't use the word arrogance, but he just said, but he, he needs to go higher in terms of what he knows. But because he's won so many games and he's never been beat, right? He said, you know, uh, I think that he's not trained himself. There's still more to learn. There's still more to learn. And so my son has said after he did his first couple plays, I knew what level he was at and what strategy I was going to be able to use to, to beat him. And I was like, everything in me wanted to be like, yes, go ahead. So, you know, like I was pumped. I was like, what? I started taking pictures. I was just like, I was like, you, you, you know, feeling good like a mama. Right. And my son was just so humble about it. And I was like, so this whole time when they was talking all this trash, and all of them were standing around saying they can teach you something. I said, I noticed you wasn't saying nothing back to it. He's like, you know, mom, it's just, you know, I just wanted to play the game and just see, you know, what he's about and what we're able to do. Like, it was just such a humility in him. Now, he's going to love when he sees his video. He's going to be like, mom, you're talking about. I say all this to say, I think it's so perfect with this lesson. We could never get to a point, you guys, where we think we know it all. And no one can teach us anything. Or we don't need to pray as much. We don't need to read our Bible as much. 
We don't need to go to God as much. We don't need to get the wisdom or the advice because we've arrived, right? You know, we've got the things we've worked so hard in life to get. And, you know, you get to a point where no one can tell you that God is able to humble the proud like you would not believe. I wish now I did video record it, but I'll never show it, you know, because one, I don't want there being any backlash against those babies. There's I don't care if you black, white, young or old, everybody, are, everyone is a baby to me. So I'm not going to post it because I did get some video footage of it. And I, and I even thought of putting a picture up and I thought, nah, don't do that, because I think this can go left field really fast. I'll just say. God is able to oppose the proud in such a way. And that was such a beautiful illustration of walking in humility, you know. And I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't know. I mean, I was sitting there like, okay, I guess they about to really, 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 you know, you know, uh, win this game against my son. And I, and I was thinking, I guess he'll learn a thing or two from it, right? And the entire time, my son sat there in total humility, and he's just like, okay, let's play a game. And what, it wasn't arrogant about it. So anyway, point is. That was a long story, and I may have told it before. I don't think I did. Let's always make sure that we walk in humility before God and give him something to bless. And I'm saying this to myself as well, you guys. I'm not judging anyone. I'm saying this to me. For those who feel like you've arrived, right, or, or sometimes we just get busy in life and we're just like, I just don't have time to invest in my walk with God like I used to. No, 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 no. God opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. I pray that you never forget that little story that I just told. When we walked out of that restaurant and, and, you know, my son, I'm looking at a six foot four young, you know, handsome man walking out the door, big old Afro eating, still had a little ice cream left eating his ice cream. And I just looked and I thought, what a valuable lesson. I pray to God I never in my life forget. Never, ever, ever in my life forget. There's no need to go around being arrogant and bragging and boasting about what you've done, what you've accomplished. No, 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 no. God is able to humble. So what's interesting, it'll be interesting if one of those young men end up watching this video one day because a lot of college students listen to my podcast, so it'll be funny if they if they know who they are. Um, and I don't wish any bad on them. They're, they're still wonderful in my eyes. But um, what's interesting is um, he's never been beaten before, ever, is what his friends all said. And he was bragging about it, you know, because of his high ranking. And now, hopefully, there's a little lesson that he's learned that there's always something to learn. And hopefully, there's a lesson that we've all learned. There's always something to learn, an area to grow in. So I forgot the title that I gave this, but let's always make sure that we walk in humility. Walk in humility before God and let him use us, okay? I love you all. Be blessed. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness Podcast.